Hey, hello, this is Tom. This is Tom's Radio Room Show. And uh, I was talking about this antenna that I finally got installed with the help of my friend. Um, I don't know which one of us was more shakier on the, on the ladder, him or me, but we got it done finally. It took us, we, I estimated, I told him 30 minutes uh, because all we had to do is put this antenna on the end of that push-up pole. Actually, it's not a push-up pole, but pole and shove it up in the air and we were done. Well, two and a half hour later, two and a half hours later, we were done. <laughs> Pretty exhausted. But anyway, here's the antenna. Let me even zoom in a little better. And uh, this is a 5 eighths wave, means the length of it is equivalent to uh, five eighths of the wavelength of the frequency you want. Ground plane antenna. Now, the reason it's called ground plane, fix this again, is these are the radios. I don't know if they showed up very good in my previous video. These are the radios that act as a ground, and the base of this is connected to your pole, your steel pole, which then is grounded. And that brings the ground for this antenna all the way up to the top of your pole and at the base of this vertical piece. And then as I said before, this vertical piece, the length of it determines the resident frequency of the antenna of which, the fr which determines the frequency it's best at. It's the lowest SWR. Now, they actually, there are vertical antennas similar to this one for HF, but that means this vertical piece is going to be really long, very long. And a lot of people feel that vertical antennas, especially for amateur radio use, are better than horizontal and even better for listening to international shortwave radio because the broadcast towers are vertical but some people say that because of the distance it doesn't really make any difference whether your antenna is vertical or horizontal that's all up in here i am no expert and i'm not going to even attempt to discuss it oh i think i just started okay anyway moving on so we got this antenna up um i did some preliminary testing uh, before I put it on the 20-foot pole and the SWR was really low. So what we can do now is here is the cable. And I've got excess cable. So here's the cable that's attached to the antenna. And what I can do is I'm going to hook this to my MFJ analyzer. This analyzer is good from... Uh, 1 megahertz to 230 megahertz. So unfortunately, where I want to use this antenna, which is 200 megahertz to 400 megahertz, I can't test it that high. So I can only look at, say, 230 and see what the SWR is at 230. So we're going to try that right now. Plug this in. And I'm going to turn this on. And I'll try to get the lighting right so you can see the screen. I realize it's not the best in the world. And let's see if we can zoom in. I don't know if this if my camera's oh I'm maximum zoom, so I can't go any further. So you have to bear with me. And I can test a bunch of things with this analyzer. And I want to do a sweep frequency plot and test. Let me just let me choose sweep frequency plot. And then, under that, I can test SWR, impedance, resistance, reactance, return loss, phase angle, and plot a Smith chart. Well, we're going to go with the simple stuff. We're going to go with SWR. And so it's starting to work now. So <clears throat> what I did, this is the last thing I tested, is I was 
cure because it was so good from 100 megahertz to 230 megahertz i was concerned that my meter or something this cable or something wasn't working so i cranked it down to five no maybe even lower than that uh yeah five megahertz and then i could see that the swr was going bad as i got into that hf band which is what i expected so right about here is 100 megahertz so it is pretty flat from 100 megahertz to 230 and if i for instance if i move over here to uh which button do i use this one okay see so say i move over to where this really it's 1.13 1 at 158 megahertz and if i go all the way as far as i can go because this meter only this analyzer only tested 230 at 230 megahertz the SWR is 2.7, still pretty darn good. Anything below 3 for listening uh, is good. Now, 2.7 is not great if you're going to use this to transmit, but it's good for uh, receiving. So it looks like this antenna, even the way it's set up as far as how long the antenna is, that antenna adjustment it's going to be good from 100 megahertz to something even beyond 230 i don't i, I wish i knew what it was going to be say at uh, 300 but my analyzer doesn't go that high so anyway i think it might be a pretty good antenna i've got it 20 feet in the air um let me turn this off to conserve my battery i've got it 20 feet in the air which I was hoping to get it at 25, about 25, because my discone antenna, it's about at 25 to 27, and I don't like to, I, I like to keep all my other antennas below that one, so that for some reason, reason we get a lightning storm or something, it would hit that discone first. And of course, anytime we have storms, I disconnect, disconnect my antennas. And I am somewhat, and this is argumentative, I'm somewhat protected because my backyard is the power lines. And the top of their pole, which is about 40 feet in, the, in height, is a heavy ground wire that they use to shield their power lines. So... Theoretically, that could shield my antennas. It's all, you know, iffy, iffy at best, <laughs> because the uh, the lightning, if the lightning is going to strike, it's going to try to find, you know, the closest ground, and just depending on where it's coming from, what direction, that could be one of my antennas. <laughs> so anyway, so that's where we're at. It appears. From the standpoint of SWR, that the antenna is going to be a pretty good antenna. So I'm going to hook it to my scanner radio and scan that uh, military aircraft band, 200 to 400 megahertz, and see if I can pick up anything. So far, I have not been able to pick up any traffic. And I just, I'm not sure why I can't even pick up. McDill Air Force Base, which is just across the bay from me. I don't understand. And I was hoping to pick up Avon Park, which is in the center part of the center part of Florida. So that's where we're at. Um, <laughs> it's been a long time getting this antenna up, and I hope it's worth it. it may not be. Um, the other option is if it doesn't work for the military aircraft bands. I can run it up to my office and cook it to the receiver that this was made for, which was to receive those data transmissions from ships, ships at sea. I think the 
the rule now is if your ship is greater than 20,000 tons, you have to have one of these transponders on it, I think. Anyway, if you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, it would be a good time to subscribe. And thanks, everybody, for the comments. All of a sudden, I'm getting a slew of comments, and I appreciate a lot of questions that I try to answer. I'm no expert, so I try to answer it. Um, I did get feedback from that um, radio store, A-N-O-N-C-O. Um, one of my subscribers sent an email to them and asked them to contact me, and they did. And guess what? I have a Texan PL680 on the way from them. Hurrah! And thanks to the gentleman who did that. Thanks for everyone that gave me feedback on their store. I pointed them to my video where I did that uh, review of their store, and they were appreciative enough to send me a radio to review. So thanks. Have a great day. Keep warm. Bye-bye.